Hello everyone, my name is Tanjigeta and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build an image search engine from scratch with just few lines of code. By the end of this video, you'll be able to take any database of images you have and then build a search engine that allows you to search amongst all those images based on the content inside that image. To show you what I'm talking about, let me give you a very quick demo of what we'll be able to build by the end of this video. So this is what the image search engine user interface looks like. And I'm using a database of vehicle images. And the idea is you should be able to search for anything in your list of images. So for example, let me just search ambulance parked in, let's say in garage. And if I search for that, it's going to go through all the images and see what the closest match it gets. So you can see these are photos of ambulance which are parked, not necessarily in a garage maybe, but parked somewhere. So it understands what the user wants to search for. And the best thing is, the key thing over here is that these images were not labeled. So it understands the content inside each images and allows you to search for that. It's very similar to what Google Photos would do, where it allows you to search images based on texts on your phone. And we're gonna learn how to build the same thing in very few lines of code in this video. Now to do so, we're gonna need three basic tools. The first tool is an AI model, which understands both images and texts. And that is where the model we're gonna be using today comes in, which is called the clip model. So this is the official blog of clip model released by OpenAI team and it's a model that they have trained which understands both text and images. Under the hood it trains both an image encoder and a text encoder to understand images and natural language together. So I'm not going to dive deep into what this model does or how it works. That's for a separate video. I'm just going to show you how to use it. So but for now what you can understand is that there is a pre-training process which happens where it takes a bunch of connected images and texts and learns them together to understand the visual content inside each image. It has been trained on image and text pairs like these and it learns to maximize the similarity score between the related image and the corresponding text. And it does so over 400 million images which gives it very good understanding of the visual content inside each image. And different variants of this clip model have been trained on different number of images. But the idea is it understands both text and images, which is why it's also called as a multimodal model, which means it understands different modes of data, which is primarily image and text in this case. So the idea is we take a list of images and we pass it to the clip model and it will use the image encoder inside to give us a list of numbers, which is also called as feature vector or feature embeddings, which is basically a vector of numbers representing the content inside the image. So we store that for all the images in the database. Similarly, whenever you give it a text query, it uses the text encoder to convert that again into a list of number or the feature vector for that text. And then once it has the feature vector for the text, it compares that with all the other feature vectors of the images to give you the most similar images for your search query. So this is component number one. Now component number two is we need a database which stores all the feature embeddings of the images so that we can access it quickly. And that is where Chroma database comes in, which is a native open source vector database by Google, which is primarily built to store these feature vectors. And you can find a more detailed tutorial on their actual website of how you can add images, how you can create collections, how you can maintain the database. But I'll skip this part and directly show that to you in the code. And you can see the code is just a few lines, which I'll quickly skim over and tell you how it works. And the third tool I mentioned is going to be Streamlit. Streamlit is basically a tool which we're going to use to build the user interface for this application. Now that the basics are done, let's dive deep into the code. So we start off by importing all the necessary libraries you want and you have to install them first using the pip install command. I'll also be uploading this code and this requirements.txt file. So make sure to install the specific versions of these libraries to avoid any uh, dependency issues. 
Now once that's done, we give a path for a database where the chroma vector db will be stored and we initialize something called as the image loader which chroma db uses to load and store images. Next we are gonna create an instance of chroma db and we pass the path of the database. The next step is we have to give it an embedding function. The embedding function is gonna be responsible for taking your text and images and converting that into feature vectors. Next. It appears I have created the image loader instance twice, so we probably don't need the first one. I'll remove this. So the next thing we do is to create something called as a collection, which is basically a topic inside the database which stores all the feature embeddings for a particular category of images. So we just make a collection called multimodal collection. We pass it the embedding function and we pass it the data loader for loading images. And over here, I can use even a better function than create, which is the get or create collection which basically checks if a database like that already exists and if so it skips adding those images again. The next function we use is called the add image collection. So it takes a folder path and iterates through all the images and finds images which end with these three image extensions. So next we iterate through all the images and we give a try condition inside which we open any image we use the collection.add function to first pass it an id for the given image and you can use a hash function to create that i just created an id using the file path and then you pass in the image like this with the keyword images you pass in the image array and what it does internally is it's going to use the embedding function to convert this image into its corresponding feature embedding over here we have an exception condition in case any of the images were corrupt finally we specify the path of the image folder and we call the add image collection function using the given path. So since this collection is already created for me, I can to show you the process, I can just store these images in a different collection, let's say multimodal collection 2 and I can run this over here. So once I run this function, you can see that it tells me that it's creating image embeddings and adding that to the database. And it will take a couple of minutes to complete that process I'll, and I'll pause the video here for now and I'll resume when it gets completed. So now that the image embeddings have been created, I go to the main app, I go to the main streamlit code where I simply have to create the instance of the collection again and simply build the web application to take a search query and search for that in the vector database. So the first few lines over here remain the same. I'm not going to iterate that again. We're simply creating in an instance of the Chroma database. And over here, we are fetching the collection that we just created. So make sure to enter the correct name for your collection over here. Over here is a simple line just to add a banner image for your application if you want. So I'm taking a th image I had created and I'm passing it in the st.image function. Next, I'm over here giving a title for the image search engine. And over here is a search box where the user can search for something. So I do that using the st.text input function and I pass it the text which has to be displayed inside the search box. Over here, I pass it the parent path of the actual images where they were stored because in the Chroma database, it is only storing your feature embeddings and not the actual images. That you have to store that somewhere locally. So I pass it the original path of my images now if the search button is clicked what i do is i call the collection.query function and pass it the search query so internally when i pass it using the keyword query text chroma db is going to use its embedding function which was clip and convert that into a feature vector and it's going to get the closest images image embeddings which match with that so i can include the number of results i want which is five you can increase that or decrease that and I say that include the distance as well. So to compare how far each image is from the search query, since both are vectors, it uses a distance function, which by default is Euclidean. And I'm saying when you give me the result back, mention what was the distance from the original search query as well. So now over here, I'm printing the results, which is not required. And I'm iterating through all the results over here. I'm iterating through all the image ID and the distances in the results returned. I'm first getting the image path by joining the image ID with the parent path because remember the ID 
were based on the image paths when I was creating the collection. So I can get the original image path like this. And now I pass the image path to streamlet.image function, which displays that. And I also write the distance of the source query from the image embedding beneath each image. So I can see for myself how far each image was. So that is all. Once it's done, you can simply go to your terminal and run this code using streamlet run and the name of your file name, which is streamlet underscore search dot py. Once I run this, this will be launched in my browser. It will, it could take a couple of seconds to load. So once I do that, I can search queries and I can get results. So let's say I search for a toy car this time and let's see what results I get. So I get images of toy cars in the database. And the thing over here is you can see the distance of the text query from the image. And the closer, the, the smaller the distance, the closer it means the there was a match between the image and the text. And you can use that to filter results. So maybe with each result, you can add an if condition so, such that if the threshold is greater than some fixed number, then you don't show that to the end user to avoid showing them bad results and maybe only showing them very good results, which are a very close match. So that was all for this video. And in my upcoming videos, I'm going to make more videos on multimodal models and feature embeddings and how you can build other applications using that. That's all for this video. If you did like it, do like this video and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.